man. Young man. You mean me, senor? Yes. Didn't I hear you singing a minute ago? Si, si, I was singing. Why do you ask? Because you have the most beautiful tenor voice I have ever heard. You shouldn't be here on the street playing a tin piano. I must live, senor. But haven't you any ambition? Don't you want to make a name for yourself as a great singer? Please do not jest with me, senor. Who is jesting? You must be to ask me questions like that. Ah. Of course I have ambition. Of course I want to make a name for myself as a singer. Every penny I can collect by turning the tra- crank of this machine... I give for a seat in the top balcony of the opera house. You do? Mm-hmm. I listen to Amati, the Fresco, Zambrini, all the great ones. And at home in my little room, I sing the scores as much as I remember and dream of myself singing their roles on the stage one day. Wonderful. I had no idea your interest was in opera. Here is my card. Present it at the opera house tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Why, you are singing Maroli? Yes. I did not recognize you. <laughs> I am honored. My dream will come true. If you sound as well in the audition room as you did just now on the street. Then permit me to continue my last street piano solo. Today's radio play, Revenge, is based on a most interesting story taken from the pages of next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all Hearst Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Well, Giorgio, how do you feel at the last rehearsal for your first leading opera role? I am a little nervous, Signor Zaroli. Nervous? Why, you know every note of the score backwards. Oh, the score, that is not what makes me nervous. Surely the audience does not frighten you? No, it is not the audience, Signor. Well, what is it then? Madame Louisa. Why, Giorgio, what are you saying? Madame Louisa Zambrini is the finest mezzo-soprano we've ever had in the company. You do not need to tell me that, senor. I know that. Never have I heard such liquid notes pour from a human throat. Her singing is like molten silver. When she... Un momento, un momento. If you can't speak of Madame Louisa in such warm phrases, then why does she make you nervous, Giorgio? Can you not tell, senor? Giorgio, you are in love with her. See, now you know. All through the rehearsals, I long to leave the stilted words of the libretto and tell her what my heart is bursting to say. Haven't you told her of your love? I have not dared. I am nothing. A new voice no one has heard of. Yes, but after tomorrow night, the whole world will know of Giorgio Fosari. Ah, Signor Veroli, you are trying to encourage me. I am telling you the truth. Never since Caruso will they hear Don Jose's song as you sing it. Madame Louisa is my inspiration. Uh, That may be, but the result is from a natural-born singer's voice. (laughs) There are two things that make an artist do his best, senor. Love and anger. So far, it is the tenderer passion which spurs me on. Uh, Have it your way, Giorgio. But be sure that you sing your best tomorrow night. Ah, If only I had Madame's promise to be mine, I should really give you a performance. Why don't you declare yourself to her tonight? At dinner. That is a good idea, senor. There she is now with Mooney. Mooney. Ah, that barrel of a singer. Big notes that come from a tub. <laughs> oh, the green-eyed monster again. <laughs> Look, you go over and join the two of them. I'll call Mooney away and you can be alone with her. Senor, you are a genius. Go on, go on. <laughs> you see what I mean, Mooney? My throat does not give me the support in the passage that is required. I know what you mean exactly, Louisa. Tell him that you want it so. And if he says anything to you, tell him I said it. I see that you have it. (laughs) Ah, Signor Pozzari. Thank goodness this is the last rehearsal, eh? (laughs) Pozzari, when you have rehearsed as many times as I have, you will let rehearsals roll off your mind like water off a duck's back, eh, Louisa? (laughs) Mooney is right. Mooney. Veroni is calling you, Mooney. I hear him. Why, when I was with the opera company in Milan... We rehearsed every minute. We were not giving up a performance. Mooney! Zeroli sounds impatient, Mooney. Perhaps you had better see what he wants, eh? But what does Zeroli ever want? Just to ask something he already knows. What costume I wear, what makeup. Mooney! All right, coming, coming. Excuse me, Louisa. Mm-hmm. Always here to me. Are you nervous, Signor Pozzari? Tomorrow night will be your big night, as they say here. I know, Madame Louisa. 
And I am a little nervous, I must confess. Oh, you should not be. You are thoroughly familiar with your role. Yes, you see, Madame Louisa. Mm, and I think you sing it all beautifully. Do you, Madame Louisa? Oui. <laughs> oh, grazie, grazie. You inspire me to my best efforts, Madame. Oh, very prettily said, Signor. Thank you. Oh, I wish this rehearsal it was over. I am getting ravenously hungry. Oh, that, that brings up the matter I had in mind when I came over here. Uh, Madame... On the eve of our co-starring, will you honor me by dining with me? I am sorry, Posare, but Louisa is dining with me on the eve of your co-starring. <laughs> Madame, I wait for your answer. Ah, grazie, signor. But, as he says, Muni and I are dining together. Forgive the intrusion. Madame, signor. Scusi. Come, Louisa. I have no place. I thought the big pig head Mooney would never leave her, Giorgio. Well, you had no luck, eh? That boar of a Mooney is dining with her. There goes your chance to get a promise. Uh, too bad. Better luck next time. Please. Si. Better luck next time. And that will be just before the performance tomorrow night. Grazie, Nico, grazie. Overture, overture. Coming. Madame Luisa. Oh, mio Pozzari, come in. Well, mio amico, it is time almost now, eh? It is time, madame. Oh, but they have, only, they have just called the overture. Madame does not understand. It is time for me to say something which I have been wanting to say for a long time. Oh, what do you mean, signor? Madame. You see before you a victim of your irresistible charm. Hear me, Wait, hear me out. Madame, Louisa. Permit me to call you Louisa. For weeks I have worshipped you. No, no, stop. You are my very life, the reason for my existence. Oh, Awake I have thought only of you. Asleep I have dreamt only of you. Signor Pazari, control yourself, please. Control I have... Control myself. For weeks I have done that. Only with the greatest effort have I been able to forego taking you in my arms. Oh, for you me. I would do anything. Louisa. I love you. No. There, I have told you what I came to say. I had to tell you. Oh, if, if only I thought you were... Say you return my love, and tonight's performance of Carmen shall never be surpassed. Oh. With your promise to be mine, I will make operatic history. You? You forget I am Louisa. You forget I am singing the title role of Carmen. How dare you take such liberties? Louisa. I must ask you to remember I am Madame Louisa Zambrini. You do not return my great love. Return your love. Your Pozzari, as soon as the curtain falls on the performance tonight, I shall report your impertinence to Maestro Zeroli, and I shall ask him to dismiss you from the company. Now go. Madame is very cruel. She will regret her words. For the benefit of those just tuning in on this program, we are broadcasting the performance of Bizet's Carmen, with Luisa Zembrini in the title role, and a newcomer, Giorgio Pozzari, singing Don Jose. This is the second act of the opera, and on the stage, Carmen is using her charms to persuade the solid soldier to go with her. But ever mindful of his duty, he is determined to return to his quarters. Carmen mocks him. I tell you, Soroli, Louisa's not being given proper support in this passage. She is a great artiste. And what do you supply for her accompaniment? A great butcher of music. That's your meaning. Maestro Giannini is giving an adequate performance. But what's the matter with Louisa? She seems upset. Yeah, yeah, so she does. I hadn't noticed. She keeps her eye on that Vazari instead of the audience. Why should that be so? Hmm, I wonder. But beauty wins, and despite Carmen's charms and fascination, Jose declares he will return to the barracks and bid her adieu. Oh, 
Director Zeroli seems to be dealing in realism this season. Pozzoli actually threw Madame Zambrini to the stage as he repulsed her amorous intrigue. Zeroli, did you give Pozzoli directions to throw Luisa to the stage? He did not rehearse the scene, so. No, 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 that was no direction of mine. So he takes it upon himself to push around the great Luisa Zambrini, does he? Wait until the end of the performance. I will show him. This is the fourth and final act of Bizet's colorful opera, Carmen. The situation is now reversed. Jose, unable to forget Carmen, has returned to her to discover she is deeply in love with Escamillo, the Toreador. Jose is making his final appeal to Carmen. To each request that she be his, Carmen disdainfully refuses, reckless of the danger which threatens her. Carmen's last refusal rouses Jose's jealousy to madness. Carmen struggles to break away from his embrace, to join her Toreador lover in the amphitheater. But Jose holds her fiercely and stabs her to the heart. Bravo, bravissimo! What beautiful artistry! The role has a dramatic actor here as well as a vocal artist. He is... What? Why, the curtain is falling. Something must have happened back of the footlights. I can't imagine... Hey, doctor, quick. Get a doctor, somebody. This is a most regrettable accident. Thank God, Luisa stabbed. Got over acting fool for Zare. Luisa, Luisa, speak. Are you all right? Luisa, caught in Himmel. She is dead. He is dead. Like the role she sang, she repulsed my affection. And like Carmen, she died. I'll kill you, Potteri, with my own hand. <laughs> you won't take her to dinner anymore, Mooney Sigfrind. You thought you were so clever. You thought you had defeated me as a rival. <laughs> Louisa wouldn't have me, but she didn't get to you either. You fool. Louisa and I were married yesterday. <laughs> You have just listened to a radio drama which was suggested by one of the many interesting stories appearing in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. The magazine distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. This is Wentworth announcing and turning the microphone over to your own announcer who has a message of interest to all of you. (laughs) 